the inception of Arby's. If you're a fast food lover, up and about the streets of the US, you've probably seen a fast food chain of restaurants named Arby's. Their logo resembles a cowboy hat, and funnily enough, that's exactly what they're recognized for. Known all across America for their roast beef sandwiches, Arby's pronounced as R Bees does not actually stand for roast beef, ironically their best dish, but is the acronym for the Raffle Brothers, founders of this legendary deli chain. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Business Unmasked, where we unmask the stories behind interesting and successful companies. Hit the like button so more people can hear stories like these, and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Now let's get to the unmasking. Forrest and his younger brother Leroy Raffle were both serving in the military during World War II after their graduations. During this time, there was a massive hype around fast food. Several successful chains were making their way around the world. KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, you name your current favorite fast food joint and chances are the 60s was probably their prime time. They were inspired and hence bought their uncle's restaurant equipment business and created Raffle Brothers Inc., which soon became the country's leading food service consulting firm specializing in restaurant equipment for operators. Those are some big words and heavy responsibilities. I guess you could say the moment they entered the market, they made quite the name for themselves. This encouraged the brothers to trademark food items, claiming both the popularity from the food and the speedy delivery of the restaurants. However, competition was high. The majority of fast food chains had the same type of menu, cheese and hamburgers, french and curly fries with a range of sodas. The brothers needed to come up with something that was incredibly unique to their brand and that gave birth to the iconic roast beef sandwich, their billion dollar idea and hero of the entire brand. For the first time in a while, you would enter a fast food joint and see roast beef sandwiches as the best seller instead of a burger and that was refreshing. The RB Brothers provided a much needed cultural reset for its time. We were totally confident while everyone else thought we were out of our minds. These were the words Leroy Raffle said on Arby's opening day. He knew their time to reign had come. On July 23rd, 1946, the first ever quick service roast beef sandwich opened in Boardman, Ohio. Initially, they were going to call it Big Tex, but fortunately, that name was already taken, giving birth to Arby's based on the initials R and B for each Raffle brother. An outstanding marketing decision they made was pricing their standard sandwiches at 69 cents, which were 15 cents higher than the McDonald's burger. This move quickly positioned Arby's in the upper strata of the quick service niche. Their first store was a major hit, basically an overnight success story, which I feel can't be said about many fast food joints. It takes time to build a brand and gain a loyal community of customers, no matter how big or small the business is. Arby's, however, broke that tradition, making an everlasting impact on the fast food world. The Raffle brothers were overjoyed. They maximized the fame and opportunity Arby's was receiving and began expanding very quickly. In fact, by the late 1960s, they had opened over 300 stores in 40 states. Spectacular, right? Unfortunately, no good news comes without some bad news. On the other side of this coin was rapid failure, hitting them faster and harder than their success. The vast expansion, although generated a lot of money, required even higher amounts of working capital to keep itself up and running. As we know, when your loss exceeds your profit, you're bound to be doomed, and that was the fate of Arby's for a while. The brothers, however, did not give up hope and pushed their luck by getting bank loans, cutting down on expenses wherever possible, the usual protocol to help sustain a failing business. They tried their best to keep the business afloat in the late 60s and kept sponsoring financial growth. They lost a number of their important investors, multiple franchises, and major bankers that eventually Arby's went bankrupt and everyone thought they were gone for good. The only option the brothers had left was to put Arby's up in the stock market and hope for the 
the best, they would eventually lose their ownership rights to their own company and when that day came, it was one of the hardest and saddest for both brothers. But fortunately, it took them a decade to finally regain their company, getting back on track to rebuild the brand without any financial obligations. They successfully came out of bankruptcy and by the end of 1975, the brothers grew Arby's to 500 locations nationwide. Yes, they were back stronger than ever and ready to conquer the world with their sandwiches all over again. Only this time, they had a new ace in the hole. Their menu included a variety of mouth-watering sandwiches starting from beef and cheddar to chicken, curly fries, and two of their secret ingredients, signature sauces, Arby's and Horsey sauce, which unsurprisingly remained in demand till date. Fun fact, the world's largest curly fry of three feet was found by Kim Medford on February 2013 at an Arby's in Waynesville, North Carolina. Can you imagine how long it took her to finish that? I wonder if she was happy whether she got a 38 inch long curly fry for the same price the rest of us pay or whether she was sad that she's stuck with that for now. I don't know about you but I for one would brag about it for days. Things like this are once in a lifetime occurrences and Arby's did that. The Raffle Brothers continued to operate Arby's organization, growing to over 800 locations and by the end of 1975, they decided it was time to step down and retired from the food service industries as multi-millionaires. Yes, you heard that right, they became multi-millionaires selling sandwiches. When I mention the words fast food, the last thing that comes to your mind is health, yet Arby's proves that taboo wrong. They were the first fast food chain of restaurants who banned smoking in their restaurants. They became pioneers of health. In my opinion, Arby's is running successfully to date due to four distinctive aspects. Number one, they stick to the basics. They didn't forget their roots and where they came from. They always had a dedicated customer base and by maintaining those relations, they automatically maintained their standards. Two, the menu upgrade. They kept their all-time favorites on the menu but a little change is good once in a while. They would switch it up during the holidays and festive seasons or just add new products time to time like briskets and which not only was refreshing for their regular customers but attracted new ones too. Number three, their playful messaging all through the decades. Hats off to all the marketing team because they are doing a spectacular job. Arby's is always focused on thorough market research and new tools to help better understand the customer experience from their point of view, which is integral for every business. Lastly, the one thing that keeps us engrossed no matter where we go is the food, and Arby's never failed to deliver quality comfort food, which warms my heart and waters my mouth because who wouldn't love to munch on delicious delis, curly fries, all white sipping milkshakes. Sounds like a dream meal if you ask me. Arby's has never failed to keep up with the trends and that's just another one of its secrets to global success. We all love and respect the combo meals, right? But long before the current value box arms race, Arby's was originally selling five roast beef sandwiches for five dollars. That can literally feed my entire friend group. So needless to say, Arby's was way ahead of its time. Nowadays, a large chunk of Arby's consumers are teenagers and the most effective way to appeal to them is through social media. With the increased use in social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok, brands have to think outside the box and collaborate with outsiders for new campaigns. That's the only way to keep moving. The latest collaboration for Arby's is with a teenage boy named John Casterline. Filmed in a traditional video style, John posted a video on his personal TikTok account of a flat screen TV that only showed the Arby's menu. The video went viral with over 60 million views and Arby's even responded to his original video saying, We want our TV back. A company that was started by two brothers just looking at others and dreaming to sell food became a reality. They are now the second largest sandwich chain. Pretty inspiring, huh? There you have it folks, the tale of Arby's. Comment down below and let us know if you have ever tried any item from the menu or whether this video convinced you to. And as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.
If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.